Okay, let's talk about the number line. So open circles, open circles are like this, an open circle, closed circle, there's a closed circle. That means it's inclusive. So this solution area, three is a solution, and negative two is not a solution. All this, there's many infinite number of solutions between three and negative two, all the way up to about negative 1.99999, etc., but not including negative two there. Um, then there's this other concept here of uh, uh, bounded. So this is a bounded segment. It has kind of a start and an end. It's bounded on both sides. If you have something that's unbounded, it's going to look like this. On one side or the other, it's going to have an arrow. Interval notation. Some of you might be familiar with interval notation. So the way interval notation works, it has a number, comma, another number. I'm going to put blanks there to represent the numbers. This first uh, number is the lower bound. The so lower bound, the second number, is the upper bound. It's very important to put the larger number to the right. So in this case, the lower bound would be negative 2, and the upper bound would be 3. And then you put grouping symbols around for interval notation. And so since this is uh, not included as negative 2, we use a parentheses to indicate non-inclusive. And at 3, it is inclusive, so we'll use a hard bracket there. So the bracket means it includes the value at 3, and the parentheses means it does not go include negative 2. Finally, inequality notation you might be familiar with. In this case, uh, for a segment, x would be in the middle, so negative 2, uh, 3, and this. And we have to be careful that's a closed circle, so there would be a line underneath which indicates less than or equal to 3. Try another one. So this one is um, has two parts to it here to compound inequality. So let's talk about this with um, interval notation. So that would be from how low does that one go? That goes to negative infinity, comma negative one is the upper bound, and that's a bracket. And parentheses always for infinity or negative infinity. And this right arrow solution area would be from two comma positive infinity, always a parentheses with the infinity, and parentheses there at 2 because it does not include 2. If it was inequality notation, we would put an and or or here. In this case, it would be an or, so an or in this symbol is union. Um, it's like an or. And then in inequality notation, it would be x less than negative 1 and x greater than 2. Sorry, that's less than or equal to negative 1, or x is greater than 2. So that's how you can write these in either interval notation or inequality notation. Let's try this one. So typically, the instructions I'll give would be something like graph and find a solution. So graph and find the solution area. Because this is the question given. It's a compound inequality. What I like to do is I like to draw them in line. I just put two numbers on there, usually negative two, five, something like that, since those are the two numbers in there. And like, what I like to do is up above, I like to graph both parts. So x is less than five, I'm gonna do in blue. This is an open circle at 5, an arrow to the left. Notice I went all the way to the end of the uh, number line. Don't stop at negative 2 when you draw the arrow. And then x is greater than or equal to, so a closed circle at negative 2, an arrow to the right. So I've, I've done each part separately up there. And so what you do for the AND statement is both of these things have to be true. So not just the blue line, but also the green line. Well, where are both of those things true? You can visually see the overlap region is right in here. And so it also it seems to overlap there at negative 2, but not at 5, because there's no point there at 5. So closed circle at neg negative 2, arrow to the right, open circle at 5. The solution would be negative 2, comma, 5, parentheses, bracket. That would be probably the easiest way to write that. 
try the same problem, but this time, uh, this time let's uh, do the OR statement. This is always a little bit more difficult uh, to do the OR statement uh, with these kinds of problems. Let me draw it again real quickly. We're going to uh, go over all the steps here. So x less than 5, open left, x squared equal to negative 2, close to the right. Okay, so for an OR statement, the blue graph, either the number has to be less than 5, so 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, etc. Or the number has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So it could be you know, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth. So when OR statement's there, you don't have to have both of them be true at the same time. We know that this is part of the OR solution. That's, what, that's the end, the overlap of the two, the intersection. So really, any point over here is a solution because it's a solution for the blue graph. Any point over here is a solution there for the green graph. So any value we plug in, if we plugged in 10, well, 10 is not smaller than 5, but 10 is bigger than or equal to negative 2. So 10 is a solution. Really, any number you call out will be a solution. So the solution is all reals. If you want to write an interval notation, it would be negative infinity to infinity. Math symbols for and and or, I think we just did or and u, and then uh, kind of like an up, down, down, horseshoe for and. Let's switch gears for a second. These are sets of numbers. So a is a set of, looks like consecutive even, consecutive integers. And b is a set of consecutive odd integers. And we're supposed to find the union, or the intersection of the two, uh, which is kind of like an and statement there. Which is kind of strange. So it's kind of like the overlap. Where do these two things overlap? Well, I see a 5 in both sets, and I see a 7 in both sets. So it looks like they overlap in the set of numbers 5, comma, 7. Or means, well, anything in B should be included in this solution, and anything in A should be included in this situation, in this solution. So this would be 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 11. Uh, notice I didn't have to write the 5 twice. Writing it five, one time in a set uh, is, is enough. It would be kind of redundant to keep writing. Let's go right to these, I think. Um, this is where it gets a little tough. So um, let's graph this one again. So I always like to graph it. Um, this one it says graph it. We could also find the solution set. But I'm going to graph uh, a number line. And in this one, I'm going to put um, just some important numbers like negative 4 in this problem. Looks like there's a negative 2, there's a 0, and there's a 2. we got four numbers on my number line. So again, up above, I like to go ahead and graph um, the graph up above of these guys. It helps me with, with my thinking from negative 4 to 0 is that graph, and then from negative 2 to 2 is the other graph. So this first question asks for the and, right? That's the overlap of the two, the intersection of the two. So these two intersect uh, right here, so from negative 2 to 0, and you've got it. And on this one, negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 2. Again, the uh, negative 4 to 0, so negative 4 to 0, and then negative 2 to 2. And then we're going to write the OR statement, or the union of the two. So everything in the blue line, everything between negative 4 and 0 is a solution. Everything between negative 2 and 2 is a solution. So there's a lot of points between those values. So the graph would look like this. Notice at 0, there is a point because 0 is between negative 2 and 2. Even though it's not between negative 4 and 0, it's still part of the solution there. 
So I guess you might say, uh, if you wanted to write the solutions, this one would be uh, negative 2 comma 0, parentheses. And this one would be negative 4 comma 2, parentheses. So let's try one more example. So again, I'm going to draw the number line. Looks like there's a couple numbers on here, maybe three and four. Up above, I like to graph uh, my thoughts. So this is negative three. Well, it starts at negative infinity there. So closed circle at negative three goes to negative infinity. And this one starts at four, open circle, and it goes to positive infinity. So the intersection of the two is where those two things um, overlap. Well, there's no solution. They don't overlap at all right there. So there's no intersection of the two ideas. Um, I didn't draw on that one. Three, three, four. I'm going to kind of graph over here. And so we have uh, the same, again, the same two. Uh, three and four. So on this one, we want to find the or. So anything over here seems to be a solution. Anything over here seems to be a solution. Only one of them has to be true with an or or union there. So I say my answer is something like this. Closed circle, arrow to the left. Open circle, arrow to the right. Um, you could either rewrite the solution is the question in this case, or you could write it this way, x is less than or equal to negative 3, um, or x is greater than 4. One last thing, um, you're going to see some uh, set builder notation. Looks kind of like this in your book. x, the set of all x is such that x is greater than 4, or something like that. And it might ask you a question about that. Really, this is the part you want to pay attention to. Um, this set builder notation is kind of uh, old school, uh, very formal math. And oftentimes, uh, you're going to see problems where they don't even use the set builder notation. They just uh, say from x is great, x is greater than 4. So you want to kind of focus in on what's after the such that vertical line there. That's going to be your inequality, and that should help you on your homework.